heading out to the dojo for a training session. Have I mentioned recently how convenient it is to have a home dojo? Man, this is something that I was striving for for 20 years. 20 years of aspiration, and the last couple years finally made it a reality. Home sweet home. Much warmer in here since those two heaters have been going full blast for the last two hours. So a friend of mine who's been in the fitness space a very long time, like 20 years, calls me up the other day and goes, oh my God, my girlfriend, I can't believe it. His girlfriend lifts weights three times a week. And he's like, yeah, she lifts weights three times a week, which is great. But now she was talking to her friend and her friend's into running. And now she's super excited about running. So now she's going to lift weights three times a week. And then she's going to add running three times a week. She's going to do both. She's going to be working out six days a week. Now, most guys be pretty happy if their girlfriend started working out like a fiend. There are many benefits. But we both started laughing because we knew what was going to happen next and she couldn't be talked out of it. But what was going to happen next is that she was going to get sick or she was going to get injured. We both knew this because we've both done it to ourselves so many times. If you ramp up training volume all of a sudden or if you're training too much, you're going to suffer from something that's called overtraining and it's going to crash you. It's going to take its toll. You're going to get injured. You're going to get sick or you're going to lose all taste for training. Basically, your hormones are going to go for a dive and you're gonna end up lower, much lower than where you started. This is a pretty common phenomenon. Look how many athletes get sick right before they compete or come down with a cold that just won't go away right before they compete. This isn't some random thing. This is a very normal thing that happens to everybody. It has to do with your body's response to stress. Look at it this way. If you're gonna have to fight a fight for real, would you prefer to do it right before you work out heavy or right after you work out heavy? Would you prefer to do it right before you go to the gym or after you're limping out of the gym because you've just killed yourself with heavy deadlifts and squats? Of course the answer is before. And that's because training actually decreases your body's ability to perform, at least in the short term. As you're coming along, this is your base performance level, now you work out. You either go lift weights, you go run, you do jiu-jitsu, you, you do a kickboxing class, your ability to perform actually goes down if it's a reasonably hard workout, right? You're kicking the crap out of yourself. Then over time, you start recovering and your level starts going up and then you super compensate for that dip and then you level out to another plateau, hopefully a little bit higher than where you were before. So each time you train, you take a, you know, take a good chunk out of your ability to perform and then gradually climb out of the hole. Maybe you come out a little bit higher. But if you train really hard and then before you come back to that initial level, you train really hard again. And then before you come back to the, even the previous level, you train really hard. You're eventually going to break down because you have not given your body the rest that it needs. Your ability to perform, whether that's strength in the deadlift, you know, strength in the bench press, your ability to kick ass on the mats is predicated on training really hard, going downhill, then giving yourself enough time to crawl your way out of that hole and actually reap the benefits of all that hard training. Okay, so we've talked about beating yourself into a pulp with the actual training, but what about your ability to crawl out of that hole that you've dug for yourself? Well, that's the rest and recovery portion. And some people like to think of it this way. They say there's no such thing as overtraining. There's only under resting, under eating, and under recovering. Probably under sleeping as well. And if you're a professional bodybuilder or in you know, the UFC, undertaking of steroids. But all those things, the rest, the feeding, the sleeping, the recovery, whether that's massage or ice baths or whatever it is that you do to get your body back into shape to perform, that helps climb you out of that hole. So the harder you train, ironically, the more you need to rest. This is why professional fighters, basically they eat, they sleep, they train. Often they'll do that multiple times in a day. They'll, they'll wake up, they'll eat, they'll train, they'll take a nap, then they'll get up, they'll eat, they'll train again, then they'll sleep. They're not normal human beings. They don't have nine to fives. They might be sleeping 10 hours at night, taking an extra nap during the day. For most normal people, this is impossible. It cannot be done. If you have a job, if you have a family, if you have a life, if you have responsibilities, good luck with that 10 hours of sleep a night, plus additional naps, plus all that time to go and train your face off. Maybe there's a jiu-jitsu super wife out there who's looking to date some guy with banged up ears, raise his children and work a full-time job to buy his geese, his acai and his, uh, you know, pay his math dues. That's possible, but it's not very likely. And if you do find somebody like that, don't piss her off because there'd be a long line of other wannabe jiu-jitsu guys in, 
you know, behind you <laughs> in line wanting to date her and you know have her support them through their jujitsu aspirations. So if you do find one like that, treat her real nice. How do you know if you're overtraining? There's no real blood test. There's no definitive test for whether you're overtraining. Sometimes hormone levels can fluctuate around, but there's many reasons hormone levels can fluctuate around. So unless you've got access to some kind of anti-aging super lab, basically you just have to go by how you feel. Are you super tired? Are you finding it difficult to get up? Are you apathetic? Do you just not give a damn? Have you lost your love for training? Are you unable to sleep at night? Or alternately, is your sleep really, really crappy? Are people telling you that you're really irritable? Is your overall performance tanking? Is it going downhill rather than up? Is it taking longer and longer to recover from each training session? Is your resting morning heart rate going up rather than down? Ideally, the more you train, the more in shape you become, your heart rate should go down, especially first thing in the morning, all things being equal, lying in bed. Now, if instead of going down, you find that your morning heart rate, when you're just lying there, you just woke up, you check your pulse, you haven't moved around yet, so it's a pretty comparable baseline day to day. If that's increasing, if it was 50 last week and this week it's 55 and then next week it ends up being 60, that's not what should happen. Your heart rate should be going down the more you train. So an elevated morning heart rate is also a sign of overtraining. Is your appetite going down and are you losing weight? Are you sore all the time, all over? Now the last two big ones. Are you sick all the time? Are you continuously getting sick, especially with colds and flus? And the second one, are you getting injured all the time? Are you getting little tiny tweaks? Are you just, you know, do your joints hurt all the time? Do you have little sprains and tears? This is hard to distinguish from regular hard training, honestly but this is an increase in the baseline level of injury, which inevitably is gonna to lead to a big injury. The story that I started with at the beginning, the friend's girlfriend who started training six times a week, yes, she did get injured pretty quickly. She got, both got a cold that, you know, she doesn't normally get colds, and then she tweaked her back from the, from the weightlifting. So we think the cold came from the running, <laughs> we think the tweaked back came from the weightlifting. Basically, she increased too much too fast, right? She didn't allow her body the time to develop that ability to recover from training. That, to some extent, is a learned ability. Your body gets better at recovering. So you don't wanna go from one training session a week to five training sessions a week, cause you will overtrain. Your body's just not used to recovering from training that fast. Now, supposing you slowly work your way up from one training session a week to five or six training sessions a week. The bad news is you may not be able to do that sustainably. It depends how old you are. It depends, you know, what kind of hormones are in your system. It depends how well you're sleeping. It depends how well you're recovering. It depends on how rough your training is. At some point, you will have reached the maximum amount of training that you can do. And without massively increasing your ability to recover, you're not going to be able to increase your ability to train any further. So I'm just going to end by talking about this super compensation business, right? You're cruising along. You're here at this level. You train. You go down. Then you come up and you go a little bit higher than where you were until you come back down to original level. So if you know that you're competing here, this is competition day and you're here. If you keep on training hard right up to competition day, your level's going to go down. If you finish up your hard training somewhere in the realm of 10 days to five days before competition, only personal experimentation will tell you this. You're going to drive yourself into the ground a little bit, trying not to get injured, but you're going to tax yourself. And then if you allow it just the right amount of time, you're gonna to increase to the higher level than where you were initially, because your body has all that time and space and not being beat down into the ground to recover. So you start out here, you go down with your hard training. Now you're not training hard anymore as so you get close to a competition. And when you get to competition day, you're actually higher than where you started, as opposed to being beat down into a pulp. Marathon runners do this all the time. They're beating themselves down, but their really hard workouts come two, three, four weeks out from before their big race. Then they have a long taper. Yes, they're still doing running. Yes, they're still doing things to keep their, their legs bouncy and their lungs strong and their heart going, but they're no longer doing the super long 20 mile runs when they're getting ready for the marathon. They're not doing the 20 mile run, you know, three days before the marathon. They've started tapering a long ways out and as a result, their body's getting stronger and stronger and stronger because of the increased rest and the decreased duration and intensity of their training. So hopefully you can play with all these things. Hopefully you can play with training intensity. 
hopefully it can improve the ability to recover so you won't end up overtrained. And then if you are peaking, trying to peak for some specific performance, like a tournament, that's a good example, or a you know, weightlifting meet if you're in a weightlifting, or a, you know, your belt test if that's coming up, you know, hopefully you can peak in time for that belt test, it peak in time for that competition, peak in time for that meet. You just got to experiment and find out what works for you. Say you've got a competition four months out. Four months away, you're going to compete at a big tournament. It means a lot to you. So a month or two away, you know, from now, do a little mini taper. Train really hard for a week, then take five days off. Take five days of just doing drilling and super light sparring. And then see how you perform after five days of rest. The big temptation is always to push it hard. Oh my God, I've got a competition five days. I'm so nervous. The only way I can go and calm myself is to go and do more training. Yeah, that's where the overtraining comes in. Find out what the optimal length of layoff, timing of the layoff, and type of layoff is for you. And that way when the big performance day comes for you, you won't be overtrained and hopefully you'll be super compensating like crazy. All right guys, until the next time, take care and have fun with your training.